Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson four of the platform specific series of my 6502 programming tutorials. Now, in this series, we're looking at various systems and how to do specific tasks on those systems. And this week, we're going to be looking at how to do bitmap graphics on the Atari Lynx. You can see the Atari Lynx here, and we're going to learn how to draw this Chibico bitmap onto the screen. Now, first, I want to talk a little bit about how the screen works on the Atari Lynx, because it's a little bit odd compared to other systems. Now, most systems will be either bitmap based, where we'll have an area of memory, and that memory is used to draw the screen, or they'll be tile sprite based, where the hardware draws the screen based on a tile map and also some sprites drawn over the top. Now, the Atari Lynx is pretty unique in the sense that it's kind of a combination of the two. Now, we have the bitmap memory, which is part of our normal 6502 address space. This any byte to be right to will immediately appear on the screen if we've got the screen set up to do that. And then on top of that, we do have hardware sprites. Now, the hardware sprites are an extra graphics processor that is very, very fast. But it, unlike other systems that layer the sprites above the bitmap layer, the hardware sprites on the links actually draw the bitmap data straight into the memory that we are using for displaying the screen. For this reason, there's no technical limit to the number of sprites that you can have on the screen. It will just get slower the more you draw, which is definitely not the case on a system like the NES, where too many sprites on a line will start to cause them to flicker. Now, that's just a bit of a technicality at this stage, because we're really just going to be dealing with basic bitmaps. But I wanted to make it clear to you how the Atari Lynx worked with regards to the fact it has sprites. And we are going to be working with a sort of plain bitmap area here. Of course, the real advantage of the hardware sprites, though, is the sheer speed of the processor. I think it's about 16 megahertz or something crazy. And it can do hardware scaling as well with things like the Super Nintendo would usually do. It's a very powerful processor, and we will look at it later. But today, we're just going to do very simple bitmaps just using software. And to be honest, the Atari Lynx's CPU is very fast, and its screen is very small. So if you don't understand the hardware sprites, there's no reason to, you'll probably need them. You'll, I'm pretty sure you'll outperform something like the Amstrad CPC on the Lynx just with pure software processing power because it's so fast. Anyway, let's start actually having a look at how we do things. So like most 6502 systems, we, we have some registers that are memory mapped. That means they're just bytes within memory and we send data to those to set up our hardware. The important thing when we're going to be using the graphics screen is we need to set the position in the memory that the system is going to show. Now you can see the registers we're going to be using here. If we were having a double buffering, we would have two banks, one that was the shown screen and one with, that was the drawing one, and then we'd swap them over. But we're going to be using a very simple setup where there is no second buffer. So we'll be drawing straight to the visible screen. Let's go over to the source code and have a look at what we're actually going to be working with. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up the visible screen and we're going to need to specify the address of that screen. Now, in these examples, we're going to use the memory address hexadecimal C000 as the start of our screen. That's because it's at the top of the memory area, so it gives us plenty of space for our program code, keeps it nicely out of our way. As I say, we're not going to use double buffering and we're also actually going to initialize the sprite hardware at this stage for later on. And we're going to, again, have the sprites appear immediately on the screen. When we're setting up the hardware registers on the links, we have to set two bytes, a low and a high address. That makes it the 16-bit pair, of course. There is a rather odd quirk on many of these registers that if we set them in the wrong order, if we set the high byte and then we set the low byte, we'll find it will fail. And the reason for this is when we set a low byte, it actually zeroes the high byte. I guess this is for if you only need to set an 8-bit amount. It's automatically clearing the high part. But it does mean if we do them in the wrong order, some of them will reset themselves. I say some because I was finding that parts of my code were working fine in the other order and parts weren't. And that's what, one of the reasons it took me a long time to get hardware sprites working on the links. But I got there in the end, and we will be looking at that later. So we're defining our screen memory at hexadecimal C000. There could be another zero there, I guess, but it doesn't matter. So C000 there is our memory address for both the visible screen and also for the drawing of the sprites by the sprite hardware. We're setting an offset for our sprite clipping. That's not something to worry about. That's so we can have our sprites partially on the screen. Again, not relevant. We're sending some initialization commands to the hardware for the sprites, enabling the hardware sprite processor there. Again, stuff we don't need to worry about yet. We're going to set up some colors here. We're setting the background, and we're setting color 15 for our font. Although we're actually using some alternate colors in today's example to make Chibico look more like she should, we're going to look at how to do colors later on. I mean, you can see the very basics of it here, but we, I've got some clever code that takes a standardized definition and it works on all of the systems and we're going to look at that at a later date so today we're just going to stick to the bitmaps 
Now when it actually comes to creating a bitmap, I have a little tool for you. It's called Aku Sprite Editor by Chibi Akamas Sprite Editor that was used to make the Chibi Akamas game, but it's been extended to support all of the systems within the tutorials to a basic level. So what we're doing is we're exporting this Chibiko Sprite, or rather a bitmap, should I say, because it's not a hardware sprite, it's just a bitmap, and we're going to send that for the Atari Lynx. So we go to the 650T here, Atari Lynx, and save raw bitmap and that will save in the format for today's example this is in screen pixel data format you can see there's an awful lot of the options here for the hardware sprites that are in a custom format there's an uncompressed format and there's an RLE compressed format very clever but far beyond what we want to cover today so we're just going to be using raw bitmap today Yaku Sprite Editor is free and open source so go ahead and download it do whatever you want with it good luck with that so we've now got our screen set up and what we're actually going to want to do is get the bitmap to the screen. We're just going to use this code here. All we're doing is we're taking bytes from our bitmap, which is an address within our file that has the bitmap data imported into it. We're then copying bytes from the, from the source to the screen, looping around the line, moving down a line with the get next line command, and then we're repeating again. Now all the way through this, the zero page HL points to the source and the zero page DE points to the destination in screen memory. We're calculating that screen memory with get screen pause. And when we need to move down a line, we're re restoring a backup of the zero page DE and we are using this get next line command, which will calculate the next line down in the screen memory. That's a very easy job on the links because the screen is very simply laid out. Anyway, let's have a look at those commands. Now the screen memory is laid out in a very simple format for us. It's very easy, really. The first byte in our memory address C000 is the top left corner of the screen. One byte along is two pixels along. Each pixel is a nibble, so there's two pixels per byte and everything's pretty straightforward there. So really nothing too challenging for us. All we need to do is work out the memory position based on the XY coordinate of the pixel we want to draw at. So how do we do that? Well, essentially all we need to do is take our X coordinate in bytes and add to it the offset for the number of Y lines we want to move down. Each line of the screen is 160 pixels wide. Because there's two pixels per byte, it's 80 bytes wide. Now what we need to do is we need to multiply our y by 80. Now because we don't have a multiply command in 6502 assembly, we're going to do this via bit shifting. It's, what we're going to do is we're going to put the y line that we want in the top byte of a pair, and then we're going to bit shift it. Now if we look at 80, that would be 0, 1, 0, 1, quadruple 0. So that this here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move via bit shifting the y from this top byte here into this high low pair here add it to a running total, then shift it to this position, add it to a running total, and that will have given us the offset of memory according to that Y position. We then add our X position in bytes and our screen base, which is C000, and we've calculated our position in memory for the XY coordinate without too much multiplication. A much simpler way would be just to repeatedly decrement our Y counter, repeatedly adding 80 to a running total, but that would be much slower. So we're doing things in a much more advanced way, although to be honest, I only wrote this for the tutorials. Grime 6502 was actually very, very fast even without this. So the um, 650, the 65CO2 processor within the Atari Lynx is very fast compared to other systems, especially systems like the 1 megahertz 6502 and the C64. So the Lynx is really, really powerful without much optimization, but I wanted to do things as well as I could. So that's what we're going to do here. So the get screen pause command will take an X and Y register for an X position in bytes and a Y position in lines. First, what we're going to do is we're going to set C in the zero page to zero. Then we're going to transfer the Y position into the accumulator and we're going to start shifting bytes. So if you remember my example here, we're effectively using this as the accumulator and this is going to be that C register. It's always best to use the accumulator in part of our mathematics if we can, because the accumulator is faster than the zero page you see. So we're now shifting across two bits here. So we've now got this layout here. This is the first layout that we required for that addition. So now we're adding that to our running total here. We're just doing that here. And DE is our destination and that's our running total. We're then shifting right twice again. And now we've got it into that second position. So we're now adding that. We're also adding the screen base to the D part, which is the high part. So effectively adding hexadecimal C000. And then we're adding the low part here. And we've just got to add some carry as well, just in case the low part is carried into the high part. And then we're adding the X position in bytes and we're adding that as well. And so that's what we need to do to calculate our screen position to draw to the screen. 
The only thing left is to actually calculate how to move down a line. So this is how we recalculate the new line once we've drawn a complete first line. All we do is we add 80 to the current memory position. 80 is hexadecimal 50, so that's what we're doing here. And we're using this add debc call here, which is one of my common functions. And here it is. All it's effectively doing is adding the zero page references bc to de here, and that is effecting a 16-bit ad addition there to calculate the new position in memory. So there we go. So that's all we need to do to move around our screen and to calculate positions. And that's really all it takes to get bitmap data to the screen. Now, when it comes to our font, we're doing things slightly differently. The font data is in a one bit per pixel format and we're converting it by bit shifting into the correct format for the screen. But really, once you've got this, you can now just use these commands to get memory locations in the screen memory and just plot bytes to the screen in whatever way you want. So if you want to calculate converting one bit per pixel to the four bit per pixel that the screen needs, or if you want to draw bitmaps like I've done here, or if you wanted to do something like um, draw vectors or 3D graphics or decode videos, it's all really just the same. It's just get the data into memory, transfer that memory into the correct screen position. If you want to see more of this kind of thing, please take a look at Grime 6502. Here's Grime 6502. This used the same basic code, but in this case, it simulates a tile map to allow for a game that worked on a lot of different systems. And of course, there's always, with all of my programs, they're all open source, so you can download them. And I totally encourage you to use them as the, the basis for your own programs in whatever way you want. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. As always, there's a text-based version of this lesson on my website if you prefer to read things through. There's also the sources download, so please go ahead and get that. And AccuSprite Editor will be in there as well if you want to create your own sprites. We're going to look at another system next week. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.